Hey guys, Taxi here from uh, Pure Chords. I want to show you today the Scope Ask Mini Server. Um, explain about the device, how you can use it, what it does, um, and in depth about the features, the more advanced features in this device, and to show you uh, an implementation, uh, how it's used in the real world, uh, using one an example of a multitude of things that you can use, use with this. Um, and the example being our Ask Aeolian uh, Android app. So, let's get to it immediately because there's a lot here. Bear with me, guys. So, this is the Ask MIDI server. Basically, what it does is it allows uh, communication over network into the scope environment, uh, whether it be an Android app, whether it be another computer uh, running scope as well. You can uh, communicate between them using this, uh, whether it be something like uh, talking uh, with another program that understands ask messages, uh, like Reactor, uh, Max MSP, I don't know, there's so many, Super Collider, the list goes on and on. You can look on Wikipedia, uh, the number of um, music applications using ask is uh, really big, actually. So for, for our usage uh, with Scope, we've implemented an, uh, a server, and it's using uh, the amazing SDK module by uh, Will Ellis to implement this. So what we have here, uh, basically you, you have 16 uh, separate controllers, 16 separate, um, let's say, addresses for information that you can translate uh, into MIDI and then use that information. Uh, the, the translation into MIDI occurs inside the server. So once the ask messages come in, you um, extract MIDI messages from this. And this way you can control anything that understands MIDI. It doesn't even need to understand ask. So you can control um, all the ask programs like we mentioned before and you can control anything that understands MIDI as well so it can be hardware like any of these really old school things that we have here it can be any plugins in scope and it can be uh, your DAW and any plugins inside your DAW anything 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 that understands MIDI um, so again ask messages come in um, they get turned into MIDI and you can choose to output them via the MIDI output of the server or you can input MIDI into this you can for example play a sequence uh, in your DAW uh, or send MIDI controllers um, it's basically, it, doesn't, it does not send MIDI notes it's for controllers so you can send some controllers from your DAW automation messages or use a physical controller whatever you want and then turn that into ask messages everything happens inside again and send that outwards to the outside world to control, uh, like we said, scope, reactor, or whatever. So basically, I've been talking Chinese to you guys for the past five minutes. I know it's a little bit crazy because it actually does all of that. You know, it does transform ask into MIDI, MIDI into ask, ask to ask, MIDI to MIDI. This is why it's called the ask in MIDI server. Uh, it basically lets you communicate in all these ways. And so that's the basic functionality, okay? But there's other stuff that uh, come into play in this specific implementation of the server that actually helps you out a little bit. So in addition to this main window, we have a monitor window. And this uh, monitors everything that is uh, coming in through OSC and everything that is going out. So for example, if I press here on my app, um, it will show me what is coming in and what is going out. Now over na right now it's the same because I have no scaling. Uh, involved and we'll get into that in a little bit but just for now remember you have a monitor window it really helps you see what values are actually coming in over ask and what values you're actually outputting over ask um, then we have the ask uh, test tool um, it's not exactly a test tool you can see it as a test tool because it, again it's a visual aid to help you see that everything is connected right if I'm moving now a slider over here you can see that it is moving over here on the test tool and if I had buttons then and I click the button then it would properly uh, enable uh, the buttons but other than being a test tool for receiving you can also choose remember how I told you this is a server so you can also send ask messages so you can decide that uh, the ask output source is the, is the messages from the, from the tool over here. So for example, if you want to output from this computer to another scope computer that has this, the ask server open, you can uh, choose the output source here as the tool. And then the knobs you move here will be received on the other machine that is listening. So, so it's both a tool to receive messages and to see that the messages are received. You can see it over by the knobs moving. 
and it is also a tool to send uh, ask messages and of course you can disable everything you cannot use the tool at all by just turning off the receive on the tool and you know not using it to not using it as the information for the ask output again so many options you can also just turn on receive or you can just turn on send so it can kind of act like a man in the middle just you know like a bypass you can see ask messages coming in and going out or you can just use I don't know I'm just I'm not getting confused there's just so many options here guys so uh, I'm trying to think you can do this you can do this you can do this you can do this and even, obviously I made it but the implementation is so robust that you can come up with uh, insane ideas this is why it's so open you can turn off and turn on any function here so the monitor the test tool you have a small help window I really suggest that you read the full manual because it explains also how to uh, set up your network but if you just need a little bit of help and a little bit of uh, just understanding um, what port you need to set up, uh, what messages to send to this thing if you're not using one of our apps that are uh, mostly configured to be using this. So it kind of gives you the basic information and it also gives credit to the guy who made this and etc. etc. So that's it for the main extra windows. Uh, I want to take just a quick look on two things on the main window. The first thing I want to show you is that uh, everything that is coming in the ask input area uh, has manipulation that you can apply to it. Uh, the first manipulation that you can do is you can set a curve table. And this basically takes the raw incoming uh, information, let's say from the slider from this uh, ask Aeolian app, and applies a curve table to it. Uh, you, need to, you need to turn it on, and then you can, you know, you can actually f invert it. Uh, you can set up all sorts of logarithmic stuff going on here. Um, so it's pretty pretty cool, pretty neat uh, way to manipulate your incoming controller information. Another thing that you have here is because, let me explain a little bit, because in the ask world, you never know what kind of messages you're, uh, are incoming. You know, let's see, I made an app over here. And for example, this app is transmitting the full uh, integer 32 range, you know, so it's one till, uh, I don't know, whatever it is, two trillion or whatever. That's the range that it's transmitting to, and you can see it on the monitor over here. But some other apps, you know, maybe you have an app that is transmitting on a totally different scale. Maybe it's transmitting values on over us that are 1 to 100, and that's it. You know, so over here you have the option, uh, whatever information is coming in, and this is, I think, the, the, the most clever thing about this program, because you can choose to scale it, and you tell it what to scale it to. So let's say you have uh, integer values that are 1 to 100, and in order, for example, scope itself, it, it expects the full integer 32, range so all you would do is you say okay take the incoming value scale this value change it from int to you know you can change it to boolean you can change it to uh, in 32 we want to change it to in 32 and you tell the max range that is incoming so if you know your app is sending a range of 1 to 100 you change the i max to 100 and then it takes this 1 to 100 and it changes it to the full in 32 range um, and then for scope, this is the numbers that scope is expecting. Um, <clears throat> so this is really great in order to to control, to have full control. You know, um, many times with ask because it's not so standardized as in MIDI, where in MIDI you always have the range of zero to 127. Uh, with ask, you know, you can send basically whatever you want to send. So it gives you the control to, you know, you, you even if you don't have a way to change what is coming in. On the outputting side, at least you can change it on the server side over here in the scope. Last thing I want to show is, uh, of course, you have uh, monitors just for the MIDI in and MIDI out. Again, this is the same uh, idea as having the ask monitor. It's just so you can see that the information is happening, that everything is working uh, correctly uh, with no issues. Uh, and that's it, basically. You can use it with anything. You don't have to use it with our apps. Uh, but we have dedicated apps that work great with this. So. As I've shown in this video, the Ask Aeolian has 16 sliders, and this is the, exactly the corresponds to the 16 uh, addresses over here. So each one of these sliders, as you can see, I'm moving it. Uh, we also have a, a small indicator just to show that there is activity, even if we don't open the monitor. So each one of them, of course, corresponds to the uh, to the right one. Oh, my fingers are a little too fat for this. There we go. Um, <clears throat> and if we show. Over here we have the Oscar Yolian, which is one of the plugins uh, for Motion Swift. 
we've set every single one of these controllers uh, from 1 to 16, same as this one. And now if I hit, let's say, the randomize button over here, as you can see, it will be moving every single one of these sliders over here. So it's really simple. As you can see, there's hardly any latency at all. Uh, what I'm, what I'm doing on the app is actually what's going on uh, at the same time on the screen. You can turn it on. And you can see that it's pretty sweet, actually. So this is one of the apps that we've developed and uh, makes use of uh, this server. Uh, it's really easy to set up uh, on the app side. Everything is already pre-marked uh, to what the server expects. So the server expects messages to come in um, from 1 to 16 with uh, these addresses as shown over here and this already pre-mapped for you in the app, the, the correct port, the correct message prefix. All you have to enter is your um, correct IP address and you can start working immediately uh, with the server. It's really plug and play once you set up your network. Uh, another app that we have set, that we have um, that makes use of this exact server is the OSC one. Basically here you just get one controller, but it's so highly customizable that it's, uh, it's very neat, I think. Um, you can have a slider, a knob, an, an XY pad, and a trigger pad. Um, for each one of these you can do various things like change the colors, change the sizes. You know, let's say we can take a knob, a uh, color, Dutch, which will be some sort of orange, size macho, and we'll end up, we'll end up with a huge knob. Um, also, we can change the data type from uh, integer float in 32. We can change the curve coming out. So basically, the kind of the stuff that is going on here in the server, in this specific app knows how to do it internally in the app. You can set the range, uh, the message address, everything. So it's really, really highly customizable. For example, um, one more thing I'll show quickly, the slider can be horizontal or vertical. And again, this makes uh, perfect use of uh, the server over here. So um, we, the, the server is free. You can just go download it from uh, Sonic Core website, um, check for more information. Really, really recommend you read the manual because that'll get you going. If you're having trouble setting it up, uh, I think it'll explain uh, away everything you need. But please, please uh, consider this as supportware, you know, support our apps, uh, the OSC1 and the OSC Alien. It's really cheap, guys, just a few bucks. Uh, check out our Pure Chords, which is our, kind of our flagship app. Um, please support us and show us that it's uh, important to you and that uh, you like what we're doing and we'll do a lot more of this stuff. Thanks, and uh, any questions, don't feel, you know, don't be shy. Feel free to contact us. Uh, I love explaining about this app. And... Hope you make good use of it. Show us what you do with it. Thank you.